Hey everyone, Ash here with another video on Coffee Girls. I asked you to submit any questions you had about wedding related things. I'm getting married in just a few days. So I just wanted to be able to answer any of your questions about the wedding, the wedding planning process, how it's been, and yeah. I'm just so excited to answer your guys' questions, and so let's just get right into them. But before, make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet, and if you're new here, my name's Ashley. This is our second vlog channel. We have a main channel called Coffee and Bible Time. I'll have it linked in the description. Go check it out. But besides that, let's just get right into the video today. Okay, so the first question that was asked is what what was the most difficult thing about planning your wedding and was it how you imagined it would be blessings from columbia also i love columbia by the way um what was the most difficult thing about planning your wedding um and it, what how was it how i imagined um not really how i imagined i think it was a lot different than i imagined i actually i hadn't even really thought about how hard wedding planning planning would be and for me, it was hard and stressful. I think that's how it is for a lot of brides, but I think I what I didn't realize was just all the different pieces that have to come to bet together, all the planning you have to do, all the to-do lists, all the people you have to reach out to, the meetings you have to have. I mean, this is if you're gonna have a traditional wedding, um, which I'm having a more traditional wedding, so. I guess I just didn't realize all the practical to-do list things you have to do. Um, but there's also been so many amazing moments that have just been um, like a dream. So it's a mix. It's a mix of just this beautiful, dreamy, um, joyous season mixed with a little bit of stress and to-do lists and meetings and getting things done, paying bills. Um, thinking about finances. So it's it's definitely a weird mix of two different worlds. So the next question I'm going to answer is, as someone who struggles with the idea of marriage, especially when being female, what were some challenges you had to confront with the Lord and possibly heal, heal or renew your mind from? So I think for me, one of the biggest things, I've been dreaming about getting married since I was a little girl and meeting the one. And I think for me, I had a lot of fantasies about who this person would be. I watched a ton of Disney movies growing up. I had this kind of ideal in my head of who I wanted to be with. And I think the Lord took me through a process since, I think since I was age 18 up to now of showing me what a godly man looks like and showing me who he wanted for me and um, showing me what it looks like to have the desires of my heart line up with God's desires and how when I delight in him, he will give me the desires of my heart. Um, so it definitely was a process of letting go of this um, kind of dream fairy tale movie that I always wanted and experienced expected for myself and for my spouse and I had to let that go and God ended up giving me something even better than what I could have ever have imagined or planned but it had to be me letting go of what I thought I wanted in my stubbornness and clenching onto my own ways. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys but I tried to say it. Okay next question. Do you ever think you'll regret your decision? I want to get married, but I'm very indecisive. So I don't know if I'd call it off or get too pressured and go through with it without really wanting to. I'm so happy you asked this question because I think this is a deep fear and actually a lot of people who want to get married or are going through the dating process and engagement process. And I am an anxious person too. I am someone who, when I make a decision, I have to pray about it and I really want to hear from the Lord about especially big decisions and like I get nervous making big decisions because I'm like what if I make the wrong decision and with marriage same thing the worry of what if I make the wrong decision I'm marrying this person and I'm committing myself to them for the rest of my life but I think that's actually a good thing to wrestle through because marriage is very serious 
you're committing to that person till the day you die and or till the day your spouse dies and so it's it's a real commitment and it's a, supposed to be a picture of the way god loves jesus christ loves his bride the way that that intimate beautiful covenant he will never be unfaithful he will never leave us he will never forsake us and that's that's what marriage is supposed to pro pro portray so um i take marriage very seriously like a commitment and covenant that i don't ever want to walk away from that being said all those fears and anxieties i had i wrestled through those before i got engaged before i said yes to marrying johnny because I needed to know in my own heart that I was ready to marry Johnny. And it wasn't even about Johnny, but it was just about the fact of getting married and committing to one person for the rest of your life. I had to wrestle through that myself with the Lord. And ultimately what the Lord taught me was that marriage is a choice. He brought Johnny into my life and I felt the Lord telling me, are you going to choose him? every single day for the rest of your life. Love is not just a feeling of being in love, it is a choice. The feelings come and it's a beautiful thing to have feelings of being in love. I mean, I love those feelings, but when those feelings are on a roller coaster every day for the rest of my life, I need to have the firm foundation of a covenant and a choice of marrying that person. And so, I don't know if that made any sense to you. I think the more you mature, the more you grow, and if the Lord brings a godly man into your life, you will know from the Lord that you are meant to be in a commitment with that person and the Lord will strengthen you for that. I hope that made sense. Okay, next question. Have your boundaries with Johnny changed at all as the wedding day approaches? Engagement is such a beautiful time, but I remember it being so, so difficult to remain steadfast until the big day. Um, of course, me and Johnny's boundaries have changed a lot. Um, and I think this is the biggest thing I wish someone would have told me is that setting boundaries is not something you do at the beginning of your relationship and then you never come back to it, you never talk about it. Setting boundaries, I think, in a relationship should be something that happens every week or every so often. It depends on the couple, but every month, just coming back to those boundaries and saying, hey, these are the boundaries that we've set. Like, are we keeping them? Are they healthy for us? Are we crossing the line? If we are crossing the line, let's come before the Lord and, and repent and talk about what are we going to change? What are we going to do better? And for me and Johnny, it was just this constant thing of coming back to our boundaries and saying, okay, Lord, help us. What should our boundaries be? Because scripture isn't clear like about exactly what your boundaries should be. Obviously, scripture is clear that you should save sex for marriage, but it's not clear about X, Y, Z before sex in marriage. So... I think one of the biggest things that me and Johnny did to help us in our boundaries was we got an accountability partner. Um, I had one of my friends be an accountability partner and then he had one of his friends be an accountability partner so that if we did stumble and if we did slip, slip, we would reach out to our accountability partners and say, hey, we're struggling right now. Can you please be praying for us and checking in on us so that me and Johnny weren't just walking in the dark. Um, me and Johnny were not... You know this perfect couple we stumbled and we made mistakes but we would come back to our boundaries renew them before the lord and keep pressing on so next question is where are you going to do the wedding in a church a beach where we are doing the wedding at my church the ceremony and then the reception is going to be at this like beautiful just like reception place i guess that's how you call it I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's more like woodsy and like natural and naturey. So I'm excited about that. Those were the questions I chose from Coffee Girls. I'm gonna go over to Instagram and answer some of your questions on Insta. Are you gonna do a wedding video to show us later? Yes, we are having like a professional wedding video done and then I'm also going to vlog a little bit behind the scenes and then I'm going to have Taylor vlog behind the scenes because I want one vlog on Coffee Girls that's like behind the scenes wedding day. Next question. 
What are you most looking forward to on the wedding day? I think what I'm most looking forward, to, I'm most looking forward to a lot of things. I can't put this in a box, people. But what I can say is that I think I'm really looking forward to, I think the moment the doors open and I walk down the aisle and Johnny sees me, I think I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to marrying my best friend. That's what I'm looking forward to. Me and Johnny are not doing a first look. So the first look is me walking down the aisle. So that's exciting. What's the color or theme of your wedding? Um, so the color or theme of our wedding. Also, she said, love your YouTube channel. Thank you. Um, okay. So what is the color theme of our wedding? Also, LOL, me not even knowing and like thinking about it. I should know this. <laughs> The color or theme of our wedding is rust, which sounds kind of weird, but it's like this deepy orange color. I'll put some pictures here. Um, but the theme is kind of like fall inspired because our wedding's October 8th. And so we want it to just be super fall themed and warm and cozy. How are you feeling? Love you, love your love for the Lord. Love you are so inspiring. Sorry, I read that so weird. Um, okay, how are you feeling? Okay, how am I feeling? At this point, today I was feeling a little bit stressed because there's a lot to do. Someone told me this who just recently got married. She said as the day got closer, her to-do list grew bigger. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that's exactly what's happening. As the day keeps getting closer, the to-do list just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So. Today I had a little bit of a bridal snap and I was bridezilla. My mom had to deal with that. Um, so it's not always rainbows, cupcakes, butterflies. I always say that on here on this channel. But um, overall, I'm just really excited. Like really, really, really excited. Really excited. Um, if I can say really excited one more time, you guys will probably click out of this video. Okay, some practical wedding planning tips. <sighs> Let go, let go. Everything's not gonna go your way. Everything's not gonna go as you planned. There's gonna be things that are different, but at the end of the day, if you and him get married, I don't know why I just did that. That's what matters. If you guys, I think I did that cause I'm like, just have open hands. Just have open hands and you'll be less stressed. You'll have less anxiety. And just let things go things that don't go your way, things you didn't expect. I just wanted to pause the video here to say that the Halo app is sponsoring today's video. If you have not heard of the Halo app, it is the number one Christian prayer app for prayer in the US today. And it is the number one Catholic app in the world. This app is an amazing resource for anyone who puts their hope and faith in Jesus. Any Christians or Catholics who are seeking to pursue a deeper relationship with the Lord through so prayer. So Hollow has over 5,000 audio guided up. prayers and meditations. You just click on the prayer or the meditation that you want to listen to for that morning or for that evening or during the day. And then you just put your headphones in, you close your eyes, you breathe, you relax. And as I was even doing this app, it was reading scripture to me and it was helping me to meditate and think about what does that scripture mean to me in my own life and how is it going to transform my life? If you use a special link, I have it linked in the description, you will get a special discount offer of three months free trial and you can listen to anything they have on the app you can get into any of the meditations any of the prayers i am so so thankful that i'm partnering with hollow and i hope you guys enjoy hollow just like we do okay next question how many people have you invited how how big is it going to be um so we invited 210 people and i think there's going to be like 140 250 people actually showing up which for me is big let me tell you that's a lot of people but there were a lot of people we love that we really wanted to invite so we we opted for that what has been the best part about wedding planning and maybe the hardest part the best part has been those like dreamy moments of like trying on my dress for the first time and um, the bridal shower, 
the bachelorette party, things like that, the fun, dreamy moments, like those have been the best moments. Um, but the hardest parts have been um, making a million decisions. I hate making decisions and that stresses me out. So making decisions about everything, that has stressed me out. Finances has stressed, stressed me out. Um, and yeah, just the constant contacts, emails, communications that has stressed me out. It's grown me a lot, but it's, it's a lot. That's the hardest part. What are your thoughts on modesty regarding a wedding dress? Um, for me, I can't say what anyone else should do for a wedding dress, but for me, I wanted it to look beautiful and like I splurged on my wedding dress. Let me tell you, I splurged money wise. Like that was something that I was at the beginning. I said, I'm willing to spend money on my dress. Um, and it had a deeper like V right here in the cleavage area. And my seamstress was able to like, just put like a beautiful little kind of florally. She just meshed it all together. So it wasn't as deep of a V neck. So I personally wanted to feel comfortable on my wedding day. I would rather feel comfortable over more sexy. So I chose just, you know, taking the more comfortable route because I know there's gonna be a lot of pastors and guys at our wedding and I don't necessarily want them staring at my boobs the whole night. So those are just my thoughts. I wanna be comfort comfortable and I want to be a woman of dignity. So next question. Where are you going on your honeymoon? We are going to Arizona. We're going to the Grand Canyon, Sedona, and Phoenix. So any uh, Arizona suggestions, link them in the description. Food, coffee, whatever it may be, let us know. Next question, tips on how to make weddings affordable. It's hard. I went into the wedding really naive, thinking I would save buttloads of money and I think the biggest tips I would give you if you really, really, really want to save money is have a very small wedding. Don't invite as many people. Don't get as many flowers. So I'm just getting a bouquet. My, my bridal party is getting very, very small bouquets. None of the tables at my reception are getting flowers except for me and Johnny's table. So we really cut back on the flowers. Um, if you want to save money, I would say with go with a videographer or a photographer and not both. Both are extremely, extremely expensive. Me and Johnny are doing both because we value both of those things. Um, but if you want to save money, don't do both. Um, save money by having your friends help you out with things. So my sister's doing my makeup. One of my friends is doing my hair. I'm still paying her, of course, but I'm... I'm saving in that area. One of my friends is doing my cakes and I'm saving money in that area. And then just saying no to things that aren't important to you but might be traditional. Like I said no to a lot of traditional things that saved us money. So, but the biggest way to save money I say is have a small wedding. That's the biggest way. Get married at your church if you wanna even make it even do the church and the reception at your wedding. You'll save buttloads of money. Saving even more money, do a potluck and have people bring stuff to your wedding. I'm just saying, if you wanna save a lot of money, do that. Um, okay. Are you nervous? I got this question a lot. Am I nervous? Um, no, I'm excited. I might get very nervous, like right before walking down the aisle. Like I will be so nervous. Like I'll be like, oh. Um, but as of right now, I'm not nervous. I'm just so excited to marry my best friend. Have you and Johnny discussed wedding night expectations? Um, first of all, me and Johnny aren't gonna be one of those couples that just talk about intimacy on our channels. I think for me personally, that is something that is private and that I don't wanna share with the entire internet. Um, and like I said, I want to be a woman of dignity and of just honor and dignity. So I'm not going to put my intimacy life on the internet, but I can share a few things with you. Have you and Johnny discussed wedding night expectations? Yes, we have. We've read books together. We've talked to friends and family about the wedding night. So yeah, 
We're not going into it blindly. How are you preparing for marriage to be the best wife you can be? I'm going to link you guys a video of, I forgot her name on YouTube. I'm like totally blanking right now, but I'll leave it linked in the description. I wish I knew her name. I can't remember her name right now, but her, she did a Q and A on being a good wife to her husband. It blew my socks off. And how are you pre preparing to be um, a good wife? Honestly, go watch that video. And that's how I want to prepare to be a good wife. That's all I can say. I'm linking it in the description. Are you going to do a wedding vlog? Yes, like I said, we want to vlog on the wedding day. In what ways are you making Jesus known at your wedding? I love this question. Me and Johnny, one of our biggest goals for our wedding is that Christ would be the center, the very center of it all because mar marriage at the end of the day is a shadow or just a pointing sign to a greater reality, which is the way that Christ loves the church and is faithful to the church and will never ever give up on the church and is bonded to us in complete and utter unity and how we're waiting for the marriage supper of the lamb. And so that being said, Christ is going to be the center of our wedding. We're going to incorporate worship into our ceremony. We're going to incorporate God's word into our ceremony, prayer into our ceremony. Um, I want him to be the center. So thank you for that question. That's such a beautiful question. Hey, Ash, are you coming to Chile anytime? Johnny is from Chile. His, that is his hometown. So yeah, I will be going to Chile and I'm so excited. Probably not anytime soon, maybe in the next year or two, but if you have any Chile travel recommendations, please leave them linked in the description. Okay, next question. What's going through your head as the wedding gets closer? A million quadrillion things, mainly all the to-do list items, which stinks, but that's just the reality, right? Okay, next question. I'm getting married next summer. Any tips or things I should know? I hope that this video overall was just helpful for you, but any tips overall? have a plan, like sit down with your fiance and say, what are the goals of your wedding that you have together? Me and Johnny sat down at the beginning of our um, wedding planning process and we said, what are our main goals for our wedding? One, we wanted it to be Christ-centered. Two, we wanted to celebrate with friends and family. And three, we wanted, I said I wanted it to be in the heated too something that was a celebration. So something that we were willing to spend money on, but it, that it wasn't too extravagant. So something that we did celebrate and spend money on, but not too extravagant. Those were our three main things. So I would definitely suggest that because that's gonna kind of be the foundation and what's gonna keep you on track throughout your wedding planning process. How do you feel about moving further away from your family after the wedding? A lot of people ask, how do you feel about moving away from your family, from your mom, from your sister? Um, and I'm also close with my dad and my brother as well. Um, how do I feel? This was a big processing thing for me right away. Right when I got engaged, it punched me in the face that I was gonna be moving away and it broke my heart because I am the biggest homebody mama's girl family person in the world. Um, so it's bittersweet. It's bitter because I'm closing this chapter of my life, but it's sweet because I get to go start a family and start a home with my husband, which is something my heart longs for. So it is bittersweet, but I think it'll be good for me because I need to transition from clinging onto my family to clinging onto Johnny. And so it's a transition that I need to go through. So um, prayers would be greatly appreciated with that. Um, let's see, any more questions? Two more, we're almost there people. Our weddings, our weddings are on the same day. Random question, oh, that's amazing. What flavor is your cake? Shh, don't tell Johnny. Johnny, if you're watching this far, don't listen. It's banana. So excited that it's banana. He loves banana, I love banana. It's gonna be banana cake. 
Next question, what are you most excited about at your wedding? Most excited about? Well, like I said, when I walked down the aisle and the doors open, but I'm, I'm just so excited about so many things. I'm so excited about the getting ready process. I'm excited about seeing all my friends and family. I'm excited about um, the party, like the dancing and the dinner together. I'm excited about, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that one of my family friends, my close family friends from New Mexico, they're coming, their whole family is coming and they're gonna be staying at my house. I'm like beyond excited for that. So I'm excited for the honeymoon. I'm excited for so many things. So it's one of those seasons where you're just, you can't even count on your fingers how many things you're excited for. And that's really how I feel. Overall, I'm so excited. Wedding planning is a crazy up and down season. That's the reality. Um, but like you guys always hear my videos, at the end of the day, my hope is not in the wedding day. My hope is not in Johnny. My hope is not in things going good or going bad or whatever. My hope needs to be ultimately in the Lord. And like I said, our wedding and our marriage is going to point to something greater. And that's Christ and the bride, Christ and his church. And the way that Christ loves us is everything to me. So the way that Christ loves me is everything to me. And so that's what I'm trying to cling on to. I'm not trying to cling on to the ways of the world. Um, I want to, of course, celebrate this beautiful occasion and enjoy it and cherish every moment of it. But at the same time, I want my hope to ultimately be rooted in Christ through it all. So yeah, those are my final words to you guys. Um, next time you see me, I'll have a different last name. I'm excited. I love you guys. It's crazy. Crazy town, crazy town, crazy town, crazy town. Can you tell I'm just nuts right now? Anyways, I love you, friend. And next time I see you, I'll be married. See you very soon. Bye.